So here we have our second video set on percent word problems. And these are taken to be in the order that they're presented in MathSpace, though MathSpace tends to randomize things. So good luck. Um, one of the questions asks, if 3.5% of the population does something, is this kind of person lives here? It doesn't matter. If 3.5% of, of the population does this, what fraction is that? I need you here to be able to convert between decimals and fractions easily. So we're going to take our 3.5%. We're going to move our decimal over. That makes this point 0, 3, 5. And I have to make this into a fraction. This is 35 over, 35 over 1, 2, 3 places, 1, 2, 3 zeros. All this whole number over 1, 2, 3 zeros, okay? Now I need you to reduce this fraction. Now remember, when you've got 10, 100, or 1,000, or whatever like that on the bottom, you can only divide by 2 and by 5, and by multiples of those. So I know that 5 goes into both of these. I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 5, and I'm going to end up with 7 over 200, and 7 is a prime number, so I know that I'm done. This is the fraction of the population, represented by 3.5%. Next, Scott works 0.4, 4 tenths of the five day work week. And the question asks, what percentage of the work week is this? The first question asks, what percentage is that? Well, what percentage is 4 tenths? Well, that you take your 0.4 and you move your decimal over two times, and it ends up being 40%. If the question asks you, how much of the work week he works, you're going to say 0.4 times 5, and you're going to get 2, 2 full days, 2.0, 2 full days of the work week. Then they ask you, what percentage of the 7-day work week did he work? Well, you know that he worked 0.4 of the 5-day work week. So, Five of the seven days that he worked is 40%, 4 over 10. I'm sorry, that's multiply. So you are going to multiply these straight across. You're going to get 20 over 70, and you're going to put 20 divided by 70 in a calculator, and you're going to get 28. 5-7% of the work week. And they'll tell you what decimal point to round to, so don't worry about that. Whatever point they tell you to two decimal places, if they ask you for one decimal place, you're going to look at this number, you're going to look next door to see if this number rounds up or stays the same. In this case, this number would round up and all those would disappear. So if it asks you for the percent to one decimal place, your answer would be 28.6%. All right, next type of question they're going to ask you. 32% of the U of O OSU Civil War football tickets were sold in the first hour. That stadium holds 96,000 people. There are this many seats in the stadium. How many seats were left? Now, I need you to understand the big picture. 96,000, they sold 32% of them. We have to figure out what 32% of 96,000 is to see how many they sold. But the question is asking how many seats were left, which means how many were not sold. Now, if the only question you have to answer is how many seats were left, then subtract this from 100. How many seats were, if 32% were sold, what percentage was not sold? That's 68%. You subtract it from 100, 68% or 0.68 of 96,000 were not sold. And you put that in your calculator. 
68 times 96,000, and that gives us 65,280 seats left. But I need you to remember to read what the question is asking and what the question is giving you. It's giving you seats that were sold, and you want to know the seats that were not sold, that were left. All right, let's say you were just handed a car repair bill, and the bill came to $360 total, and $185 of that was labor. And the question is, what percentage of your bill was labor, and what percentage of your bill was parts? So, you want labor over total. And you're going to do this division problem. So you're going to do 185 over 360 to get this question, what percent of labor, and then what percent of parts. Well, you can either take this and subtract it from 100 to get you the other, other percent, or you can do 360 minus 185, which is 175. And you could divide that over 360. But I need you to see that they both work. Then you're going to divide that. That gives you a decimal. You move the decimal over twice. You round to whatever they need you to round to. Another type of question. There was a rock sample. We have this big rock bed, and we took a rock sample from this rock bed. And in this rock sample, it had 3.5 kilograms of copper. Well, we know that this copper is 10% of the copper in the whole rock bed. Now, I need you to see what that, how to translate that to math. 3.5 kilograms is 10% of the copper in the rock bed. Let's take that and, and make these words into math. 3.5, 3.5 is, is, 10%, we're going to change it to a decimal, of times the copper in the rock bed. And that's the part we don't know. How many kilograms of copper are in the rock bed? So this is going to be our X. So we've just translated this question into math. 3.5 equals 0 0.10 times X. Now, I've got something multiplied to my variable. I have to divide by it but I have to divide both sides so I can get my variable all by itself. So this becomes my math problem. And in my calculator, I say 3.5 divided by 0.1, and I get 35. 35 kilograms of copper. 35 kilograms is my answer. Okay? What if we were a factory worker and that factory worker earns their money not hourly but by how much they accomplish? And this particular factory worker earns $4 for every basket they put together and $7 for every tray. And when they ask, how many baskets do I need to earn $142? This is a division problem. And then how many baskets do I need to earn or how many trays do I need to earn $120? This is also a division problem. And eventually, it's going to ask you for percentages. What percentage of this money is this and that? And so you're just going to set them up the way we've been setting up all of the other percentage problems. Okay? Commission. We're going to touch on commission again because this part of mass space asks you to do it backwards, and we didn't cover that before. What if the sale total was $1,635, and the commission on it was $327. And the question is, what is the percentage that this salesperson is earning? What's the percentage? So we know that we, if we start with $1,635, and we multiply that by a percentage, and we don't know what that percentage is, we're going to get 327. This is how you set that problem up. Because we knew from before that if we took the sale total and we multiply it by their commission rate, we would get how much money they made. 
So we have to be able to utilize these same kinds of numbers when they reverse it on us. Now, I've got a number multiplied to my variable. To get rid of it, I've got to do the opposite. I'm going to divide by that number, but I've got to divide this side too to get rid of these. And x equals 20%. You're actually going to get 0.2, but you know that this is a percent problem. That's going to be 20% because you're going to move your decimal over two times to make it a percent. Now we have overtime. Let's say you've got a person who works $12 an hour for their normal pay, but if you ask them to come in on the weekend, they are going to charge you $16 an hour. Well, what if I ask this person to work six hours on Friday and five hours on Saturday? I need you to be able to figure that out. Well, six hours times $12 an hour is going to be $72. And five hours times $16 an hour is going to be $80. And you're just going to add those two together, and that's how much money that person makes for that week. Then, we've got, then we're going to step it up a little, and we're going to get percentages in here. What if Fred makes $14 an hour in his normal wages? And if he, if he works more than eight hours in a day, that's called overtime. And... For overtime, over eight hours in a day, he gets time and a half. And if you call him in on weekends, he gets double time. Well, first, let's, we can figure out how much this is. If $14, hour, $14 an hour is his normal time, time and a half means 1.5 times his regular pay, or 150% of his regular pay. And that's going to give us $21 an hour. Double time means this times 2. So he's going to make $28 an hour here. Then they give us these schedules. What if he works just 7 hours on Thursday? If he works 7 hours on Thursday, that's 7 times 14, and that's it. $98. So he made $98 on Thursday. But what about Friday? Friday's got all kinds of, or this week, this has got all kinds of stuff going on. So we have 11 hours on Friday. Now realize, eight of those hours are regular, and the other three hours are time and a half. This is where they're going to trip you up. So we have to do 8 times 14 plus the other three hours are going to be 21. Then he's going to make three hours on Saturday and two hours on Sunday. That's five hours on the weekend and he makes $28 an hour there. So you're going to do this math. But I need you to see how to set it up so that you can do it yourself. Okay?